We are getting you started on your outdoor projects, whether it's building new patios and walkways, shopping for small space patio furniture, or growing your own veggies. It's all on today's show. So we're going to start by laying the foundation with our gardening expert, Frank Ferragini, <laughs> in the house. Look at this. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. You know what's exciting? Yeah. When you are back on the show regularly, it means gardening season, and then that means spring, and then it means summer. And it means patio season. And it means patio season. Which is amazing. It's just yeah. life, right? You yeah. want to you want to enjoy yourself outside. And probably the first thing you need to think about, though, is what you're standing on and what the foundation is. And you've brought such great options. Yeah, so this is what's called hardscaping. So when you deal right. with plants, plants is softscaping. So uh -huh. that's how we soften the landscape. And mm -hmm. then this is hardscaping where we talk about fashion and function at the same time. So this could be a driveway, a patio, a walkway. Right. And there's a whole lot of things that you need to consider when it comes to really doing something like this. Okay. So first off, do you want to do it yourself? You no. Know, if, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Yeah. If, if you are a weekend warrior, <laughs> right. there, there, you can do this, but there is some technique that needs to be uh, really considered by doing it. And there's a lot that really has to do with underneath this. And that is okay. the soil that's underneath and making sure that you have a really good foundation and base. Even when you're hiring a contractor, you got to make sure that they dig out the area, that they're yes. putting gravel down and they're putting a good base layer down too to lay the interlock patio on top of. And the reason for that is we want water to flow through. Right. What happens when water freezes underneath in the winter? Uh, it's it's going to crack. It's right? going to heave up it's and down. It's going to go up and, and down and it's going to crack. The stones are going to crack. That's the other thing. I wouldn't trust myself to get the, the land level enough. It's got to be completely level before you lay those stones. And compacted. So you got to go yeah. over and compact and come back comp and compact. Mm -hmm. So when you're hiring a contractor, one of the things you should not be asking them or they should be asking you about you is about the subsoil. So if it's a right. clay-based subsoil, you're going to have to dig out more. If it's sand-based subsoil, they don't have to dig out as much. Okay. And that's when warranty comes into play too yeah. because you want to make sure that they know what they're doing, mm -hmm. right? This is an expense that goes on and on. Yes. Um, and there's so many different options. So this is Unilock and these different options that are here have all what's called Endura color. Okay. So this is like buying tile for the outside. So it'll stay that color. It does. Oh, uh, that's after good. you have all the sun and all of the different things yes. that will beat down on it, it'll stay true to that color. So when you're buying your Interlock stone, yeah. there'll be a range of different prices. And it could be based on the size of the th stone. So yep. you can see that one there, how it has a very nice texture on it and how almost how it has a tumbled look. Mm -hmm. um, and you I can like also it. see that this, this is one that I have. This is quartz stone. Nice. I have a full uh, walkway at my house in this one. Yeah. And that's a cobble kind of look. Mm -hmm. And you see the space that's in between these. What's neat about that, that's what's called a permeable paver. Okay. So what that permeable paver does is allow more water to go in and then not run off into other areas. Got so it. So that's super important as well. Okay. And um, that one looks like there's something about that that looks a little bit more rustic, a little bit more natural, but still that color makes it very contemporary. It, it, I like you know, that. And it comes in a wide range of co colors. Mm -hmm. This one here, the dark, and it can be used as what's called, you can put it for like a little bit of a feature like piece a on the a border on the outside. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple other things that you really want to consider as well. Uh, sometimes people will talk about sealing, and when you're sealing, the reason why they'll seal some of their pavers is to keep that color, but with the Endura color, you don't need to do that. Okay. Or you always notice that when you put water on paving stones, they usually tend to look a little bit better, brings out a deeper color on them. Right. So when you seal it, you can get that deeper color. I see. That's what the ceiling will do. Yeah. Now, are you one of those um, people on my street who washes their driveway with the hose? No, but but I will say my, my wife is a you real. You can tell me, yeah. Frankie. My wife is a real estate agent. Yeah. And in order to make some of her pictures look better for some of the properties listing, yes, we'll wet down the walkways first. It looks better, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. When it's nice and wet, and it just kind of looks richer it looks good. and clean. Yeah. And, People I just don't like, have the time and energy to do like, that. We're like, buy that house. So, <laughs> <laughs> so as well, there's other feature pieces when it comes to doing paving stones as well. And this is just like grout. Oh, these are nice. Okay. And so, oh, just, this is the stuff that goes in between. You got it. And okay. if you feel that, feel how hard that is. Yeah, that's lovely. So this is a, what's called a polymetric sand mm -hmm. that you're going to go and put it in between. So you okay. actually sweep it in. Yeah. And then you're going to wet it down. Once you wet it down, it almost becomes like concrete. It's compact, yeah. And you can see that the different colors will add different features to the stone based upon a lot of the times we're matching brick that's and nice. things. 
Um, but by doing this as well, weeds won't grow through as much. We'll say as much. Yeah, because it's still <laughs> going to happen, right? It will because you need to reapply this yes. over time. Yeah. So you got to make sure that uh, you're using the right materials. Uh -huh. You can also just use, and you can see that this one here doesn't have the polymetric sand. It just has a limestone screening that's put in between. Yep. If you want to save some costs on that, that's where you can put it down. But got the key it. is when you're hiring a contractor, what are some of the questions you think you should be asking? Uh, how much is this going to cost? Yeah. <laughs> So that's going to be based upon your subsoil. Yes. How much work's going to have to be done underneath. Yes. The type of stone that you're going to select. Because the stone can run you. Like tile, right? When you go to Absolutely. buy a tile, you can buy a tile. You can buy a, you know, you can buy a ceramic tile at a dollar, or you can buy a really nice, uh, you know, even. You can buy marble. Marble, right? For, for twenty dollars a square that's foot. That's right. right. And also the size of the um, the size of the stones you're using. I mean, the stones that I used in our uh, driveway, and Carson, I'll tell you more about this. Yeah. It's uh, they were heavy. They're heavy. Like they take a lot of. You have to think also about the installation and the labor and all of that. And if you're doing more rounded corners, more oh, cuts. Yeah. So the more cuts that are involved, a square area like this is easy to lay down. You don't yes. have as many cuts. So all those variables will go into cost. Right. Another question you should ask is, yes. can I see some of the previous work that you've done? Absolutely. Right? Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Hopefully this is coming as a referral, a reference, and you've already looked that up, but absolutely you got to go look at see. it. You want to see how tight the joints are, where the yes. cuts are, how good their quality of workmanship is. That's right. And see one that's been laid about five years ago to see where it's sitting at. Ooh, good okay? point. And then you want to make sure they have liability insurance. Yes. Because if they drive their bobcat into the front of your home, <laughs> yeah. you want to make problem. sure that they're covered. That's right. right. Yes. There's a lot of things that can happen even if they uh, even if they're driving out with a dump truck and it takes down the overhead wires. There's lots yes. of things that can happen and make sure you get along with that contractor. That mm -hmm. contractor is going to be in your space for a long time. For a long period of time. Yes. And if you don't like them, it's you a don't problem. Want, Yeah, yeah. So you got to get along with them yeah. and, and really ask them about their timing. And then there are some payment plans. As, as some contractors will That's even true. offer payment plans. That's true. That's so funny. It's such a. It's an emotional relationship. I mean, they're fixing your house, right? They're, That's your biggest investment. It's a big deal. Yeah, they're at your front door, and if they got a cigarette hanging out the side, no shirt on. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah. Well, it depends on what they look like. Yeah. Thanks, Frankie. Thank you.